All right, so I know it's been a while since the last video and I do apologize, but since then, in the time that I've had, I moved to a new apartment, I started a new job and I bought a M1 MacBook Pro. Now the whole point of this video today is for me to share with you guys how my experience has been of using this, the new MacBook Pro M1, with this, my trusty Dell XPS 9 300. Just as a side note, I didn't rush into a comparison video when I first got the MacBook. So I've actually been using and comparing the two for the better half of three months now. And I hope that provides you guys with a bit more about the nuances between the two laptops so that you can make a better purchase decision. Without further ado though, let's get into it. Now, firstly, let's quickly talk about the build and the looks and the touchpad, the keyboard, the speakers and the screen. Hold up, all at once? Well, yeah, kind of, because I did do a video comparing the older mid-2020 MacBook Pro, that's the one with the Intel processor, up against the Dell XPS 9 300, and lo and behold, the new MacBook Pro M1 is exactly the same in terms of the chassis, has the same screen, the same keyboard, etc., etc., as that mid-2020 MacBook Pro. So if you guys wanna check out that video, I'll link it down below for an in-depth comparison about these type of features. But the TLDR is, firstly, the Dell just kicks ass with the screen. It's on another league given the Infinity Edge display with those razor thin bezels and it also has options for touchscreen. I have the 4K touch display on my Dell and against the MacBook, it's comparable in terms of color and brightness whilst being sharper and having a better anti-reflective coating. The MacBook, however, is still ahead when it comes to build quality. That aluminum unibody is a tank, although the Dell is catching up it just suffers from minor issues such as chassis flex. In saying that, the Dell is lighter, it's also smaller, and it's just more portable whilst maintaining excellent looks. The touchpad, MacBook just owns, but the keyboard I find is nicer on the XPS due to this slightly less glossy matte texture to the keycaps, and the fact that I don't deal with the bloody touch bar, but the MacBook still inches just that tad bit ahead when it comes to speaker quality. Port selection, goes to Dell, however, for having a micro SD port and having its USB-C charging ports on both sides of the laptop thing. Now, one more quick note about using these laptops physically that I didn't mention in my previous comparison video. I think the design of the horizontal rubber feet on the Dell is so much better than the rubber feet design of the MacBook. So many times I felt the MacBook was too slippery on my lap or on my chest because those four rubber feet are just so far apart because the rubber on the Dell stretches its full length, there's no bare areas on the laptop's underside for it to slip away from. The main things I want to talk about now are performance and usability, because for me, I think this is what it all boils down to. As a quick side note, I am comparing the 8-core CPU and GPU M1 Mac with Intel's last generation i7 1065G7 in my Dell. So be wary that the newer generation i5 and i7 processors give that, at the very least, an additional 10% boost in CPU performance alone. Starting off with good old Geekbench, the M1 Mac pulls just slightly ahead of the Dell in single core scores. However, when moving to multi-core testing, it almost doubles the Dell. Cinebench R23 shows pretty similar results, with the M1 MacBook Pro again showing more prowess in multi-core performance. Now benchmarks only mean so much. In terms of real-world use, I've got to be honest, I was really pleased with the performance improvements I got from the Mac coming from the Dell. When I initially got the M1 Mac, I knew there was a lot of hype from various reviewers, particularly given the benchmarks. But I wanted to keep my head level and provide you guys with a real-world impression of using it without the extravagant hyperbole that have plagued some comparisons in the past. Having done that, I can honestly say that the Mac has significantly improved my experience of mobile computing from the performance alone. My use cases generally involved photo and video editing, some light gaining, some light statistics with R, and the usual note-taking, YouTube, web browsing, etc. And in all categories, I found some, if not a substantial degree of improvement. Lightroom editing is just so much smoother on the Mac for example, displaying photos and the changes I make to them as I edit is instantaneous, whereas the Dell will lag behind. Furthermore, the export times are substantially improved. Exporting photos from a recent time lapse saw the Mac beat out the Dell by six and a half minutes. Even more importantly, I can do all of this on the Mac whilst not plugged in. Same thing goes for video editing. I was literally dreading every time I had to video edit on the Dell because it would often become a hot, spluttering mess. 
Whether it's using Adobe Premiere Pro or the more Mac-friendly Final Cut Pro, I can video edit with MacBook M1 on my lap sitting on the couch without worries about lag or stuttering when scrubbing footage or applying effects. This is particularly impressive as I shoot 4K on my Sony a7 III, which can be notoriously difficult to video edit with. If we have a look at the Puget Benchmark Score test, Puget Benchmark Score test for Adobe Premiere Pro, we can see what I mean. Even running the non-native Premiere Pro through Rosetta 2, M1 Mac scores way ahead of the Dell XPS. What's more, I don't actually worry all that much about the MacBook scorching down on the skin of my thighs when I'm using it whilst video editing. It's not the coolest experience, but it's definitely a step above the Dell XPS in this regard. Speaking of cooling, when it comes to fan noise, we see that the MacBook definitely spins up when under full CPU load. And actually, it does so more than the Dell XPS. When it comes to SSD performance, we do see that the MacBook M1 is superior in terms of read and write speeds. However, the one massive advantage of the XPS is that you have the capability of upgrading your storage via the user accessible M.2 SSD slot. And that for me is more advantageous than SSD performance alone. Both models sport 720p webcams, which are both pretty average in performance, although the MacBook Pro does have better audio quality to boot. Now, before I move on, a quick word about app support for the new M1 architecture. I personally don't think many users will have any issues with app performance or incompatibility when using M1 Mac. Since its launch, there has been a substantial increase in developer support for the new SoC architecture, including updates to Microsoft 365, Google Chrome, Notion, and Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Apps that are still waiting for support, such as Spotify and Adobe Premiere Pro, work very smoothly via Rosetta 2, and I'm still yet to encounter any software incompatibilities from my general use. Other quick tidbits from using the Mac and Dell. The Dell obviously has a massive advantage when it comes to gaming, just by virtue of the Windows ecosystem alone. As a standalone device, it's not the greatest, but you may be able to play some light titles without too many drop frames. When combined with an eGPU, you can see substantial leaps in gaming performance thanks to the inclusion of Thunderbolt 3 in both of its USB-C ports. I made a whole separate video on this that you can check out in the link below. The M1 Mac may see developers look towards making games more readily available in the Mac OS ecosystem, particularly as the new iPad Pros share the same M1 processor and have the ability to sideload apps. For example, I managed to sideload Genshin Impact onto my M1 Mac, and whilst there is no support for its use with the MacBook's native keyboard, I get perfectly smooth and enjoyable gameplay using a Bluetooth Xbox or PS controller. It's well above 60 FPS and with max settings enabled. Admittedly though, it's displayed in the native 1.43 by one aspect ratio of the iPad, so there are black bars to the side, but it's still a significantly improved experience of the Dell, which struggles to even load the game without the assistance of an eGPU, and even then is not able to reach the FPS levels of the MacBook. Who knows, but maybe with the release of higher tier M1 processors, more developers will become interested in implementing gaming titles within macOS because there is certainly a lot of potential there. All right, so battery life, let's talk. The Dell XPS 9300, when it comes to battery life, is no competition for the optimized M1 MacBook. I did a YouTube loop test for a day when I was out at work and my God, the MacBook was still running when I arrived home 9 p.m. that night. What I love most about this is that I'm charging my MacBook maybe once every two to three days, depending on what I am doing. Whereas it's the complete opposite situation with the Dell. I am constantly suffering from battery anxiety. In saying this, the MacBook isn't perfect and definitely drains its battery life a lot quicker depending on what you're doing and how bright your screen is. After using it for several months, I found that gaming on the MacBook led to quicker battery drain, followed by tasks like photo video editing. Part of what makes the MacBook so power efficient is the lower QHD resolution screen, which I think is still one of the better ways of maintaining decent battery life in this laptop market. 4K is just not that much more discernible on the Dell than the QHD is on the Mac at 13 inches, and it's a battery tromper. 
The optimization of M1 to macOS and its programs though, arguably contribute to the most power efficiency on the MacBook. For example, I think the other great reason why my everyday battery life is so good on the MacBook is battery drain in sleep mode. I might lose 1% overnight on the MacBook Pro in the worst case scenario, as opposed to the 4% an hour that I lose on my Dell. Now I know what some of you guys might be saying, just put your Dell in hibernate mode. And I do agree. This does help resolve such battery drain, as well as a lot of the sleep-wake issues that have plagued me in the past. See my long-term review in the description below. But it's just not a convenient solution. Given the time it takes to boot up my Dell from Hibernate mode, I can log into my Mac, load up YouTube, open Lightroom, and then some more. Intel's new Evo platform promises instant wake and longer battery life, but whether that helps with battery drain in sleep mode, as well as the sleep wake issues, I won't know until I get my hands on an Evo based laptop. But based on this comparison, Intel, Dell, Windows, they have a lot of catching up to do. In terms of pricing and what you should go for, the Dell XPS 9300 has been superseded by the XPS 9310. And currently on Dell's refurbished website, you can still pick up my exact model for 2,139 Australian dollars. For $200 extra, you can pick up a similarly spec MacBook Pro M1 via Apple's education store. But I would argue that for $1,969 all up, you opt for the MacBook Air M1 with 512 gigabytes storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. With that, you not only save money, but will still have arguably a very similar experience to the M1 Pro all but with slightly lower battery life and slightly lower performance in sustained loads as well as a slightly dimmer display. Competing against this is the Dell XPS 9310 with full HD touch display. This price is for about 1,939 refurbished. Whilst it has a lower screen resolution, the brightness and color saturation of this type of display will likely compete against the M1 Air. A given better battery life with the lower resolution display, as well as the slightly higher performance in terms of the 11th gen processor in Intel Evo technology, it could be a worthy competitor. Now, if I were to do this all over again, like for example, if you were to take away these two devices and instead give me a budget of say $2,500 to spend on a new device, I would probably drop it on an M1 MacBook Air. Don't get me wrong, the XPS 9310 would still be an awesome option. It looks fantastic, it has better IO, and it's smaller and lighter. But once you start using the device, those features don't matter all that much in comparison to the fluidity of your workflow and your battery life. Yes, the MacBook is more bulky and its design is outdated, but from the time that I've used it, it allowed me to do my work, my photo video editing, my browsing just more smoothly and without the constant worry about whether I should be plugging in. Now, as to why I would pick the Air over the Pro, I just don't think that the extra $370 between the models is worth it. I mean, you get a slightly better screen, battery life and performance on the MacBook Pro, but it's also not without its negatives. For example, it has a fan, so it will make noise. And it's also slightly heavier, weighing in at about 100 grams more than the Air. Now, I would love to know what your opinions are on this. Are you currently considering a switch to M1 Mac? Have you done so already? Or are you sticking put with Windows? Let me know in the comments and feel free to also suggest any other content you would like me to cover with the devices I have. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. But until the next one, see ya.